to talk about how the current regulations are looking in a wrong direction uh, when it relates to uh, chemicals released from natural gas activity and its impact on health. I would also like to provide some information uh, on the health symptoms that can be produced uh, from the top five, six uh, chemicals Dr. Brown discussed. So um, the current regulations that are, uh, that are supposed to uh, minimize health impact make critical and questionable assumptions. They look at individual chemicals uh, and how it impacts uh, an organ system, but they, uh, they ignore the fact that the mixed chemicals can have a similar effect on one organ system. Uh, let me, uh, let me uh, clear my point here. So here in, on this slide, we have three different chemicals, chemical one, two, and three, I'm not naming them. Uh, they, they may have a similar effect on the same organ system, cardiovascular system. So if a person who lives near natural gas activity uh, um, or uh, like compressor station inhales or ingests all three chemicals at the same time, uh, they may get an amplified cardiovascular effect. So that this effect of being exposed to multiple chemicals uh, affecting the same organ system is not considered by the current regulations. And the second is, um, the regulations look at average exposures occurring over a period of time and, uh, and not acute exposures, uh, which uh, can have an impact, high impact on individuals. Uh, for example, during times of peak exposures, the individuals near the compressor sites uh, may get exposed to high concentrations, which, uh, which is very unsafe even by uh, federal and state uh, guidelines. So the toxic chemicals, uh, can cause acute and chronic effects. Uh, the short-term exposure to high levels of uh, contaminant can produce acute effects like mild irritation of the eyes to an extreme uh, asthma attack. And uh, long-term exposure to low levels of chemicals can produce chronic effects like uh, COPD, that is a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, could ca cause cancer, and also neurological problems like uh, toxic encephalopathy. Dr. Brown and uh, Dr. Lewis mentioned about the uh, uh, chemicals released from the Title V, the top five. I would like to give the symptoms associated with these chemicals. Uh, nitrogen oxide, the sources could be the regular automobiles, cars, trucks, uh, power plants, and of course, uh, compressor stations. Uh, they can irritate airways, uh, can aggravate respiratory, respiratory problems like uh, um, asthma. Uh, and if, or, if a person is exposed uh, for a longer period, they can, uh, a person who um, didn't have asthma before can develop asthma and also um, increase in risk for uh, respiratory infections. Uh, other chemical is uh, carbon monoxide, sources, trucks, cars, gas stoves, uh, compressor stations. Uh, very high levels, outdoors are less likely, for a person with pre-existing heart condition, uh, that may be very uh, dangerous uh, because it lowers the amount of oxygen uh, that person receives uh, to the heart and, and especially the heart because uh, the person with the heart disease may already get less oxygen. And if carbon monoxide replaces oxygen, the, the person may get uh, more uh, of carbon monoxide and less of oxygen that may lead to a um, heart attack or uh, some other problems. VOCs, uh, volatile organic compounds, uh, they may cause uh, irritation of eyes, nose and throat. Uh, they, they may cause headaches. Um, there's a, uh, also, uh, if the person exposed to this chemical, uh, chemicals, group of chemicals for a long period, can damage the liver, uh, kidney and central nervous system. And uh, many VOCs are known cause carcinogens, so they, they can even uh, cause cancer. Uh, it's still due to say, if uh, someone living close to the sites are developing cancer, but, but um, there's a positive activity, we could see that in the future. Formaldehyde uh, um, could cause burning sensation in the eyes if the levels go beyond 0.1 uh, parts per million. Um, can cause uh, wheezing, nausea, and uh, EPA classifies formaldehyde as a probable uh, carcinogen at very high levels, and also if a person is exposed to it for a prolonged period of time. Other toxin, other pollutant is PM 2.5. Um, here, this is a hair 
uh, human hair, uh, and this is a tiny PM2.5, so in comparison, it's very, very small. And the humans have an ability to trap PM10, which is bigger than PM2.5, in, in uh, upper, upper respiratory tract, but the PM2.5 ex escapes this defense mechanism, and they may go all the way into the deep lungs and cause uh, breathing problems. And also, PM2.5 has a synergistic, synergistic effect. Uh, that is, it can form a complex with uh, moisture in the atmosphere and also uh, with the chemicals, if there are chemicals present in the, in the, in the environment. And uh, they can travel deep into the lungs together. And the chemical, after reaching the deep lungs, can, uh, uh, can uh, pass the blood alveolar barrier and enter the circulatory system and reach the organ and cause an effect. According to ATSDR, um, U.S. Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry, uh, short-term exposures are uh, dangerous for sensitive populations, but not to, the, not to the general population. That may not be true uh, because of the um, previous slide, what I explained on the previous slide, because of the synergistic effect, uh, the chemicals can easily uh, reach the deep lungs uh, with, uh, by forming a complex with PM2.5. And uh, chronic exposures, uh, annual percentage concentration of 15 to 16 micrograms could be dangerous for general population as well as sensitive subpopulations like in elderly children um, and also people with respiratory and uh, heart disease. Uh, this uh, image was adopted uh, from EPA. Uh, it, it provides health impacts uh, from um, ozone and PM2.5 exposure. Uh, this horizontal axis is proportion of population affected and this is severity. Um, so because uh, from exposure to PM, uh, this large group of population could develop lung uh, problems in their uh, lungs and uh, they can produce some uh, uh, cause, uh, it may cause cardiac effects. And, uh, and in children, it may increase uh, uh, school absences uh, and uh, for, uh, for general population, it may increase emergency department visits, which, uh, uh, which can increase the healthcare costs in the country. And uh, people with, uh, uh, who are, uh, it can also cause premature death in people with existing heart and lung diseases. So the major health problems associated with these uh, chemicals uh, that these chemicals can, uh, uh, can cause is upper and respiratory uh, diseases, increased hospitalization, can cause skin irritation, cardiovascular diseases like arrhythmias, increased blood pressure, um, can cause neurological problems like headaches, uh, toxic encephalopathy. Uh, some researchers reported uh, the, um, increased preterm births, uh, low birth weights, low guard scores, and uh, birth defects uh, in children who live uh, close to the natural gas activity. And uh, as these uh, uh, chemicals, uh, many of them are known carcinogens, uh, they can cause uh, uh, cancer. So if you live close to these compressor sites uh, and if you think that your health is affected, because of, because of this exposure. So what you tell your physician, um, you, um, you need, first thing you need to give a full description of the symptoms um, you develop and uh, also tell them how far you live from these compressor stations. That's, and, uh, and also like you need to provide information what kind of chemicals are released from the compressor stations if you know them because, because physicians know um, what the chemicals can do, what kind of symptoms they may cause but they may not know what kind of chemicals are released from these compressor stations because it's a new problem. So even sometimes it's also the patient's responsibility to educate the physicians. And, but we, we for, uh, at EHP, we also have educational tools for physicians and also general population to educate themselves and what, uh, about various um, chemicals and various uh, uh, things related to the natural gas activity. And also if you have anyone in your home having similar symptoms, uh, you can, uh, you should tell your physician because that way the physician would uh, be able to uh, see if there's any pattern occurring because of this chemical exposure. 